We all have days when we can look a bit grumpy, but for one of the species that we work with, looking grumpy is pretty much a full-time job. Even grumpy species need conservation though, so get ready to meet the original grumpy cat and possibly one of the feistiest animals we're working to protect, Pallas's cat. <coughs> The Royal Zoological Society of Scotland has a long history of working to conserve small cat species. Of the 41 cat species on the planet, only seven are big cats like lions and tigers and leopards. The other 34 are small cats that you may never have heard of, like sand cats and jaguarundis, and the species that we'll be looking at today, Pallas's cat. Small cats might not be as famous as their larger cousins, but they are just as interesting, and Pallas's cats are a perfect example of that. So let's take a closer look and find out what makes these little-known fluffy felines quite so special. Pallas's cats might look chunky, but they're actually the same size as domestic cats. The trick is that their fur is longer and denser than any other wild living cat species, which gives them this very stocky appearance. This dense fur is important for keeping warm in the Central Asian mountains where Pallas's cats live. The pattern on their fur and their rounded ears make it very easy for Pallas's cats to blend in with their surroundings, making them really tough to spot, even when you know they're there. Can you see the Pallas's cat in this picture? How about this one? Those rounded ears clearly weren't popular with everyone though, as the scientific name for Pallas's cat, Otocolobus, means ugly ears. No wonder they look so grumpy. I can't imagine any of us would be too happy with a name like that. One of the main reasons these cats' faces look so expressive is that, unlike most other cats, their pupils are round instead of, well, you know, cat's eye shaped. So, now we're a bit more familiar with what Pallas's cats are, here's David Barkley, our conservation manager and all-round cat man, with some more information on what makes these felines so important. The Pallas's cat is an amazing small cat species. Not only are they beautiful, but they're also renowned for being one of the most expressive and charismatic of the small cats. Now, in the wild, they can be found across the high mountains and grasslands of Central Asia, often used in marmot burrows as den sites or rocky crevices, preying on small rodents like the pika. But what's interesting is they also share most of their range with their bigger cousin, the snow leopard. As Dave said, Pallas's cats are found across quite a large range in Central Asia. But as you can see from this map, there's a fair bit we don't know about this species, including the full extent of its range. At least some of the information we have on where these cats occur comes from camera traps that have been set out for their much more famous snow leopard cousins. The fact that there's so much we don't know about Pallas's cats is part of what makes conserving them so tricky. We do know that their numbers are declining and that they're being negatively affected by habitat loss, attack by domestic dogs, and other forms of human persecution. But devising a strategy to help protect them is really difficult without much data to go on. Unfortunately, like many other small cats, the Pallas's cat has historically been lacking in conservation action, awareness, education, and long-term support. And this is the main reason as to why in 2016, the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland partnered with Northern's Ark of Sweden, the Snow Leopard Trust and Foundation Segre to establish the first global conservation project for the species, the Palaces Cat International Conservation Alliance. Here's Emma Nigren from one of our partner zoos, Northern's Ark, to explain more about this alliance called PICA for short. PICA is the first and only project dedicated to palace cat conservation on a global scale. Our main objectives are focused on capacity building, raising awareness for the species, facilitating collaboration and implementing global conservation actions. We are supporting field researchers across range countries by providing funding, resources and survey techniques. This support promotes conservation actions in the field where it matters the most. PICA has also developed education material translated into multiple languages to increase awareness of the species. As with many of the other conservation projects that RZSS is involved with, collaboration across countries and organisations has been fundamental to the success of the PICA initiative. Working collectively with an extensive network, in particular the IUC and CAT specialist group, PICA has played a significant role in coordinating and implementing 
the first palace cat status review and the first conservation strategy for the species. RZSS has been involved with Palace's cats conservation for some time. We previously housed the species at both Edinburgh Zoo and Highland Wildlife Park and successfully bred them. And if you think adult Palace's cats are cute, then you definitely need to see their kittens. Our conservation manager, David Barclay, is in charge of organising the captive breeding programme for Palace's cats across European zoos. Now, whilst we have this incredible partnership with Norden's Ark, Snow Leopard Trust and Foundation Segrea, it's also important that we recognise the contribution from zoological facilities that have Palace's cats across the world. Many of the zoos that have Palace's cats have been supporting the PICA project and have really joined us on this journey in Palace's cat conservation in the last few years. Zoos have also contributed greatly to our understanding of Palace's cat's reproduction and behaviour and the fact that they have a really weird call that sounds like this. <coughs> Oh. Zoos have also raised a lot of awareness about this species. And of course, they contribute financially. As with most of our other conservation projects, it's money from ticket sales to both of our zoos that helps contribute towards the conservation and our work on Palace's cats. And at the moment, with both our zoos closed, that funding is not coming in. But you can still help save the animals that you love in the wild by following the link that you can see here or above or below this video and giving whatever you can to help save threatened species via our conservation work. In the next episode of our ZSS Goes Wild, we are headed under the sea off the coast of Scotland to find out how our vets are helping protect an enormous and amazing fish, the flapper skate. I will see you then.